I'm so thankful for the name of Jesus Christ. Acts 4.12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. The name of Jesus can still deliver. It can still save. It can still heal. Whatever you need, His name is still powerful. Well, I believe that the Lord is going to speak to us today. So I want to bring our attention, if you have your Bibles, uh, we're going to draw our thought from Proverbs, the 25th chapter and the 11th verse. We're going to read just one verse of Scripture. And the Bible tells us this in Proverbs 25 and 11. It says, A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pictures of of silver a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pictures of silver i want to preach to us from this thought the right word for the right moment the right word for the right moment so i'm asking you would join together in prayer with me and let's pray that God would open our hearts and he would ready our minds and he would speak to our souls. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we are thankful for your tender mercies, your loving kindness, for your compassions that fail not. Lord, you know exactly what each and every individual is facing. You know the difficulty that they are having to endure. Lord, we are praying now that the word of God that was forever settled in heaven, that word that is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, I'm asking God you would speak to us today with clarity and distinction. God, we pray in the name that's above every other name, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. Well, I believe that it goes without saying 
that we are living in an unusual moment. Uh, perhaps now more than ever, humanity has an understanding uh, that they think they are in control, but we understand and realize it's actually out of our hands. Sometimes in life we are faced with the reality that even though we would like to be in charge, there is somebody else that is bigger than us. And that exact opposite holds true when we begin to talk about the Lord, a God that has all power in heaven and in earth. And make no mistake about it, he is not caught off guard. He is not taken by surprise. He is never zoned out, and he is definitely not fallen asleep. But he knows what's going on every moment of every day in every single life. Uh, heaven is his throne, and earth is his footstool. He is the author, and he's the finisher of our faith, and he is the one that holds tomorrow in the palm of his hand. And so we can rest assured, and we don't ever have to wonder that God is still on the throne. God is still on con in control. And we have a promise. It's a promise that we can hold on to regardless if we are in awful adversity. It's a promise that we can cling to even when we are dealing with shocking setbacks and terrible trouble. It's what the Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 4 and 8. It says, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. There may be trouble come our way, but we know who is in control. And throughout the scriptures, over and over and over again, there are moments in time when a word is spoken. And that right word at the right moment, it can bring peace to a troubled mind. That right word at the right moment, it can bring joy and happiness when there is darkness and depression. The right word at the right moment can bring healing and strength when we are weak and when we are sick. Uh, in my mind, I see her. It's almost like I can envision her world being flipped upside down. Uh, the life that she once knew was now totally different. Long gone were the days of her waking up in the morning feeling good about herself. Now when her eyes opened for the first time, laying on her bed, she felt nothing but pain. Pain that followed her. Pain that would simply define who she really was. She could look back, uh, seem another time. She could imagine days when she was content and she was happy with her appearance. Times where it was not like now, where she was afraid. She was fearful and bothered by what others thought by what others may have said. And now it was that self-conscious mindset that had her in a constant state of torment because in this moment she was not who she was before. She was completely bowed over, uh, looking different, uh, being disabled and not having the full function of her body. It was like this now day after day, week after week, month after month, 18 years and counting. But on this particular day, she finds herself in the 13th chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke. She is in the synagogue. 
She was in that place because she wanted to hear the ministry of this man named Jesus. Jesus, the one that was notorious for opening blinded eyes and unstopping deaf ears. Jesus was the one that she heard about. Uh, He's the one that made the lame to walk and the dumb to talk. It was Jesus that fed 5,000 people in the wilderness with just five loaves of bread and two fish. And she had to know, was this man really everything that she ever heard? So this 13th chapter tells us that she was there with this infirmity in her body for over 18 years. But then in this 11th verse tells us that she was bowed over and she could in no wise lift up herself. At first glance, we may not see what that scripture is really telling us. But she was in a place that she could not help herself. And there are times and there are moments in our lives that we reach a place that we cannot have the solution to our problems. We can get to a place, a situation and a circumstance that we do not have the remedy to our ailment. We cannot find the answer to all of our questions. And you may be in a situation like that today, wondering what's going to happen. No matter how hard you try, things don't seem to get better. Let me tell you, you are not alone. This was the case for this woman. She had reached a place in her life she was almost ready to give up. Considering throwing in the towel and waving the white flag of surrenderance. But she came to hear a word from God one more time. It's that word. You may think that you're by yourself, but you're not by yourself. You may think you're alone today, but you are not alone because this word of God is going to speak to you. Don't ever underestimate the power of a word from God. A word from God is more intoxicating than being drunk. A word from God is more illuminating than a Ph.D. A word from God is higher than the nirvana you can get from a drug. A word from God, it can change your life. It can alter your destiny. It can brighten your future. There was something to be said about the right word in the right moment. There. There she was, sitting on that seat. And yet the scripture says that Jesus saw her, and he called her to him. We see in that 12th verse, it says, Jesus saw her. It's refreshing to know that God sees us where we are. God sees tears that we cry that nobody else sees. He hears us when we call out and we are suffering. The prophet said in Isaiah, the 59th chapter, in the first verse, he said, the hand of the Lord is not shortened that it cannot save. The ear of the Lord is not heavy that it cannot hear. Friend of mine, he has eyes and he can see. He has ears and he can hear. And he has hands and they can still reach for us. He saw her, and when he saw her, he called her to him. We need to pause for a moment and put ourselves in the shoes of this woman. She was suffering in her body. She was in pain and agony. She was dealing with hurts, hurts that were every day, all day long. And when Jesus called her to him, she could have simply thought in her mind, why doesn't he come to me? But when Jesus called, she responded. And that's what we have to remember. Jesus will call us, but it's up to us to respond. 
we can be waiting a long time if we're waiting for him to grab us and to make us pray. We'll be waiting a long time if we're wanting him to appear in our living room and show up with an angelic visitation. Most likely what will happen is he will just call you. You will feel the fast beating of your heart. You'll feel the butterflies in your stomach. You may even wonder, how is God speaking to me by watching a video, but he's still speaking to us? And while he calls her, she responds. And when she makes her way to him, Jesus simply offers a little line of a prayer. He says, woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And just as sure as those words came out of the mouth of Jesus, that lady who was bowed over, that lady who was suffering and in pain, in the blink of an eye and at the spoken word, she shot up and she was no longer bowed over. She was no longer in pain. She was no longer suffering and in torment. Why did that happen? It was the right word at the right moment. And Jesus knows exactly what to say. Jesus knows exactly what to do. And whatever you need from God, He can speak that right word to you. I want to encourage you. I want to challenge you. Don't let your dilemma distract you from his word Uh, don't let the problems and the pandemonium and the pandemic of our day don't let it push us out and not hear the word of the lord that word that we hear that word that we gathered around and listen to even right now is the word that isaiah 40 and 8 says the grass withereth And the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. It's that word as Psalm 119 and 89 says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. It's that word that Jesus said in Matthew 24 and 35, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. That word can speak to different eras. That word can speak to different generations. That word can speak to different people. I see the people. I can see them in my mind. They are so discouraged. They are so upset. They have been let down. Hope had been stolen from them again. It was these people in the fourth chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke that lived in Nazareth. Nazareth was the place that many had come before Jesus and tried to proclaim that they were the Messiah. Acts 5 tells us that Thutis came and offered hope, got about 400 to follow after him, but his movement, his promises came to nothing. Another man named Thutis preached that he was the Redeemer. and He was the Savior of the world. Everybody got all excited. They were full of anticipation, only to be let down again. Because Thutis was not who he said he was. But on this day, this man Jesus stood up to preach. And when Jesus got up to preach... At first, they assumed he was just another speaker. He was just another man. He was just another politician offering that same empty spiel. But oh, if they would have known that when Jesus got up to preach, he was not just going to talk the talk. No, he was going to walk the walk. 
in Luke 4 and 18, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. This was the one that gave the word to different people throughout the history of humanity. What he did for others can be simply summed up in just one word. He was Adam's redeemer. He was Abel's vindicator. He was Abraham's sacrifice. He was Noah's ark. He was Jacob's star. He was Joseph's dream. He was Gideon's captain. He was Samson's strength. He was Joshua's champion. He was Moses' rock. He was Deborah's authority. He was Esther's integrity. He was David's music. He was Solomon's wisdom. He was Elijah's fire. He was Micah's mercy. He was Malachi's messenger. He was Isaiah's prince. He was Jeremiah's balm. He was Ezekiel's wheel. I don't know if you can feel it, but I feel the presence of the Lord even right now. God knows how to be the right word in the right moment. He knows how to speak the right word at the right moment. And he knows how to show up with the right word at the right moment. When Jesus got done preaching, the people knew once and for all. This was not just another man. This was not just a celebrity or some kind of superstar or athlete. This is the one that can change us. This is the one that can deliver us. This is the one that can lift us up when we are down. He can encourage us when we are discouraged. He can lift us when we are lowly. He can strengthen us when we are weak. He can empower. He can encourage. He can endow. He can enlighten. And he can even envelop us all through the right word at the right moment. Oh, would you let the Lord speak to you today? Would you really open your heart and pray that prayer and ask him, God, would you speak the right word to me? God, I need that lifting and that encouragement. God knows how to step in in the most unorthodox ways. And he can show up when we need him the most. It wasn't long ago we were preaching in Florida at a particular church and we had worshiped God and preached the sermon. Finally came time for the altar call. And this certain individual came to the front. The pastor pulled me to the side and said, Brother, I need to explain to you what this man needs. It became obvious by looking at him that he was rather sick. He was suffering and struggling. And that pastor told me, he said, Brother, we need a real miracle. The man that has come down to the front for prayer, he has stage four pancreatic cancer. Uh, They're trying to offer some kind of treatment and hope. But last time in his appointment, they told him they don't even know if it was going to be needed because the cancer has spread too far. And they're not even sure with all of the different kinds of treatments if they can fix it in time. He told me this, and he's really bothered, and he's really upset and fearful. So would you help me pray for him? And so the pastor and myself went over to where this man was. And we began to lay our hands and began to pray in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to tell you, there's power when you pray in the name of Jesus. We asked God to move on his behalf. We asked him to perform the impossible. We took him at his word and said that God is still the miracle worker. He's still the one that hears and answers prayer. And as we began to call on that name of Jesus, right before we finished I felt 
just three words come over in my mind and shared it with him and said, it is well. I didn't know what was getting ready to happen, and he didn't know what was getting ready to take place. But I know what happened in the moment when the word came. The word came and said, it is well. We left, we left that church, and later on that week, I'll never forget, I was driving in my car, and I, the phone rang, and got a call from that pastor who we just ministered for. And when I answered the phone, he said, Brother, I need to tell you something that's happened. He said, I don't know if you can recall or not, but there was a man that came to the altar last Sunday, and I shared with you that he had stage 4 pancreatic cancer, and it was spreading very rapidly. And we prayed for that man, and this past week he went to his appointments to see if he was going to be eligible for any kind of treatment. And when he went in, the main physician had done the x-rays and the test and looked at all of his charts and finally came back and said, Sir, did you have some kind of treatment without me knowing? He said, I don't think I understand what you're asking, doctor. And that physician said, have you done anything in these past few days because I'm noticing something very different? The man asked, well, what is it that you see different? He said, there's no pancreatic cancer in your body whatsoever. We can't find any sign that you even had cancer. In that moment, that man spoke up. And said, I'll tell you what happened. I went to church and I heard a word from God. And God only didn't just speak the word to the congregation, but he spoke to me personally and said, it is well. I'm telling you, driving in the car, the pastor and myself started having prayer meeting that turned into full-blown church. We were shouting. We were worshiping. We were praising the Lord. Uh, we got that report, and I was so excited. But it was about six months later that, that pastor called me to come back and preach to that congregation. Uh, when we went there, the pastor during the service called this man's name out and had him stand up and testify. And when he stood up, he told the church that six months ago, there was a special service, and God did a miracle for him, healed him of his cancer. He said, but now it's been six months, and just a few days ago, I went to my six-month checkup, and the doctor told me again. He said, six months has passed by, and you are still cancer-free. You know what happened? It wasn't the speaker and it wasn't even the building, but it was the right moment at the right time. You may think that even though we're not in church, God can't really speak. Yes, he can. You may think that you can't get a miracle because the preacher can't physically lay his hands on his head. But no, God can speak. And whenever he speaks, the impossible can become possible. God spoke, and when he spoke the first time, the world came into existence. He spoke the first time and hung the planets into orbit and named every star. He spoke, and the trees grew, and the flowers bloom. He spoke, the trees grow, and the sun shines, and the moon glows. And when he speaks, Oh, the author of our text says the word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pictures of silver. That encouraging word can strengthen. That deliverance word can bring freedom. It's that word that can alleviate addictions. It can break 
bondage. It can heal sickness. It can cure disease. It can forgive sin. It can restore prodigal sons and daughters. It can bring back backsliders. It can strengthen saints. It can re-energize preachers. The right word at the right moment. And I feel that word being in operation right now. So here I want to do something. And I'm asking for you to help me. Uh, You may be sitting. You may be standing. You may be by yourself or you may be with family members or friends or a group of people. But I want to ask you, would you lift your hands with me? Would you open your heart? Let's pray together. Because I believe even across this video, God has the ability to deliver, to save, and to set free. Let's pray together. Father, upon the authority of your word and the power that's in the name of Jesus Christ. God, you know every hurt. You know every problem. You know every pain. You know all manner of suffering. You know the hardships that we are enduring. You know the difficulties that we are facing. But God, I'm praying now that you would open the windows of heaven. God, would you open up the floodgates. Pour out blessings that cannot be contained. God, send your spirit. Let the spirit of God begin to move. For we know it's not by might and it's not by power but it's by the spirit of the lord your spirit is not confined to a building your spirit is not constricted to a particular place your spirit can move right where we are you are that spirit god where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty god let there be liberty to be blessed let there be liberty to be lifted up let there be liberty to be encouraged and strengthened from on high god we pray for every man and woman we pray for every teenager and child that may be watching this and we are asking lord send your goodness send your kindness send your graciousness to where they are at God, we pray in the only saving name under heaven. God, we are praying in the name that has all power in heaven and in earth. It's that name that causes cancers to disappear. That name that causes tumors to fall off. That name that can cure incurable diseases. That name that can put joy where there's been nothing but sorrow. That name that can bring peace that passes all understanding where there has been confusion and anxiety and worry. God, we pray in your wonderful, all-powerful, all-wise name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Truly, the presence of God has visited us today. And my prayer for you is this, that you would be blessed. And God would give you that word. And you can hold on to this spoken word throughout this next week. And you can be blessed by what God is doing. We pray God's richest blessings on you. God bless you today.